In this video, we're going to talk about potential meters. Potential meters are devices that can limit the current flowing in a circuit. They can attenuate a signal or even reduce the voltage across certain elements. Potential meters are essentially variable resistors. This particular potential meter has three terminals. We'll call the first one A, the middle one B, and the last one C. As you rotate it towards the right, that is in the counterclockwise direction, the resistance between points B and C increases, whereas the resistance between A and B decreases. And if you turn it in this direction towards A, that is in the clockwise direction, the resistance between A and B increases while the resistance between B and C decreases. And we're going to talk about the math regarding this shortly. So here we have the electrical symbol of a potential meter or a variable resistor. This is point A, point B, and point C. Now let's say we have a 50 kilo ohm potential meter. What you need to know is that the resistance between points A and C is the value of the potential meter. It's 50 kilo ohms. Also, the resistance between points A and B, I mean points A and C rather, is the sum of the resistance between points A and B and the resistance between point B and C. So let's say you turn it out in such a way that the resistance between A and B is 10 kilo ohms, then the resistance between B and C is going to be 40 kilo ohms. If you turn the dial halfway, then AB will be at 25, BC will be at 25. If AB is 30, BC is 20. So these two must add up to the total resistance. Now let's draw a picture of the potential meter so you can get a better visual illustration of this. My drawing is not perfect, but we're going to make this work. So this is going to be point A, B, and C. Now let's say that this particular potential meter has a resistance of 100 kilo ohms. If we set the dial right in the middle, the resistance between A and B will be 50 and the resistance between B and C will be 50. The resistance between A and C will always be 100 for that particular potential meter. Now what happens if we set the dial at the quarter mark? That is 25% of the full swing. If we set it at the quarter mark, then the resistance of A and B is going to be about 25% of 100 kilo ohms, which is 25k. That means B and C has to be 75k. Likewise, if we turn it to, let's say, the 40% mark, the resistance between A and B will be 40k, while the resistance between B and C will be 60k. So that's just a visual illustration of how this potential meter works and how you get the corresponding resistance values based on which terminals you're using. So you can use all three terminals in a circuit or even just two. For instance, if you just use A and B, you can use it as a current limiting resistor, a variable current limiting resistor. So let's talk about the different ways in which we could use a potential meter in a circuit. So one way in which we could use it is in the voltage divider circuit. So this is our output voltage. And let's say the input voltage is 12 volts. We're going to use a, a 12 volt battery. So this is going to be point C, point A, and point B is attached to the output. So the output voltage is going to be the input voltage, which is 12, 
times the resistance between points A and B divided by the total resistance between points A and B and B and C, which is basically the resistance between A and C. So the resistance between A and C is fixed. If we use the last potential meter, that's going to be 100 kilo ohms. What's not fixed is the position of B along A and C. So that can vary. So thus, this potential meter can control the output voltage. So the output voltage could swing from 0 to 12 volts. If you swing the knob towards point A, you're going to bring the voltage to 0 volts. If you swing it towards point C, you can bring the voltage to 12 volts. If you put it in the middle, you'll get 6 volts. If you put it at the 25% mark from A to the middle, you'll get a quarter of 12 volts or 3 volts. At the 75% mark, you'll get 9 volts. And so by turning the knob, you can vary the output voltage from 0 to the maximum of the input voltage. So that's how you could use a potentiometer in a voltage divider circuit. Now, there's some other ways in which you can use it as well. So let's say you have an AC signal or a signal carrying a sound wave, and you want to adjust the volume across the speaker. So what you need to do is connect the potential meter to a speaker like this. So the input, the input signal, you want to connect it to points A and C of the potential meter. The speaker at the output, you want to connect it between points A and B. And so let's say the signal varies from, let's say it has a, a peak voltage of 10 volts. Now, the output voltage will vary from 0 to 10 volts. And you could adjust it. If you swing it towards A, it's going to be at 0 volts. It's going to be off. If you swing it towards point C, it's going to be at its maximum volume. So in this particular way, you could use a potential meter to control the volume of the sound at the speaker. So that's another way in which you can use this device. So in this manner, what we're doing is we're decreasing the voltage across the speaker. And so this is a form of signal attenuation. But sometimes we may not want to decrease the voltage. Instead, we may want to limit the amount of current that is flowing in an element. In this case, we could use a potentiometer for brightness control. So let's say we have a battery and we have a light bulb. And we want to control the brightness of the light bulb. The brightness of the light bulb is directly proportional to the current flowing through it. And so by increasing the resistance, we can decrease the current flowing through a light bulb, thus decreasing the brightness. If we want to decrease the resistance, we'll increase the current and thus increase the brightness of the light bulb. So we can adjust the brightness using a potentiometer. Now, this circuit is going to be different than the previous two circuits because we don't need to use all three points of the potential meter. We can just use two out of the three terminals. And that's what we're about to do here. So this is terminal A, B, and C. In this circuit, terminal C is not used. Or rather, let me say that again, it's not being used. Let's say we have a 6 volt battery. As we turn the knob, we can increase or decrease the resistance between points A and B, depending on the direction in which we're turning. So if we decrease the resistance, there's going to be more current flowing in the circuit, and the brightness will increase. That is, if we turn the knob towards A, in that's going to be the clockwise direction. Actually, I take that back. If we turn the knob towards A, based on the picture that I had in the beginning of the video, RAB goes up. It increases. 
if we turn it in the clockwise direction. So the current will decrease and thus the light bulb will become dimmer. Now if we turn it towards C, the resistance across A and B will decrease. And this is in the counterclockwise direction. And if we decrease the resistance between points A and B, the current flowing in the circuit increases, and so the light bulb becomes brighter. And so that's the basic idea behind how the potential meter works. You can use it to adjust the output voltage across a circuit. You could use it to control the volume of sound in a speaker, or you could use it to adjust the brightness of a light bulb. There are other ways in which you could use it as well. You could use it for oscillators to control the frequency of a circuit by adjusting resistance. So anything that is affected by a resistor, you can modify that effect through a potentiometer. So that's it for this video. Those are some of the applications of potentiometers. Thanks for watching.